All right, hey, what's up everyone? Coach Kyle here with Kenny Try Training. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a hybrid athlete lifestyle, why I became a hybrid athlete and why you should too. All right, so let's kind of dive into it. Um, so uh, hybrid athletes, something I honestly was not familiar with that terminology or uh, what a hybrid athlete was for a little bit, but we can kind of put two and two together. Um, so what a hybrid athlete is, is basically uh, you're uh, excelling in cardiovascular uh, as well as strength training, right? So a little bit of my background, um, for those of you that don't know me, is um, I kind of grew up uh, running, playing lacrosse. My dad was a big triathlete. Um, so stuff like that, and that led me into the Marines, and the Marines a lot more cardio, endurance, stuff like that out of the Marines and became a trainer. Uh, as a trainer, I got real obsessed with bodybuilding and kind of went the other way. Uh, and then I bumped up all the way to like 240, 245 um, on my body weight. And then um, that was kind of a weird point for me because I had grown up as just kind of a, you know, like a cardio bunny for so long. Um, but once I was, you know, a trainer and I was working for a Gold's Gym and I was obsessed with bodybuilding and trying to look like Arnold and things like that, I quickly realized that I couldn't really run anymore or run like I used to be able to. So I'd get gassed running, you know, two, three miles or something like that. And then that's when I kind of decided to uh, shift gears back the other way um, and then start uh, training for like a Spartan race. So I signed up for a couple different events. Um, and then that led me again back kind of to the left, right? So back to the cardio side of things. Um, so I guess with my kind of experience um, over time, I've kind of gone to the extremes of both uh, of both paths. And then over the last couple, like, I don't know, maybe a year or two, I kind of met in the middle. So I've, and then it turns out it's called being a hybrid athlete, right? Um, so, you know, it seems like a, a, a popular, talk, popular topic on social media. Um, you know, you got guys like Nick Bear with, uh, you know, millions of views on his hybrid athlete program. So today I just kind of wanted to run through, I guess, some of the pros and the cons, how to train, how to perform the workouts, uh, maybe t talk a little bit about nutrition and things like that. Um, so I guess we can start off with a couple of the pros. Number one would be an increase in your athleticism. So again, being a hybrid athlete, we're looking at uh, being basically a really strong individual as well as being able to perform uh, strong endurance style cardio, right? Or distance cardio um, or even high intensity cardio. So an increase in athleticism um, is definitely a pro in my opinion. So uh, working on, um, you know, kind of things like, uh, like box jumps and burpees and sprints and stuff like that. And then also, you know, kind of maxing out your, your one rep on squat bench or deadlift or things like that. Um, so increase in athleticism is definitely a pro in my opinion. Um, more than likely, you'll start to feel much better. You'll start to perform much better. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you just become more athletic overall. So a lot of individuals, a lot of subscribers, clients, stuff like that, you guys played sports in high school. Um, and then I imagine you'd like to get back to that feeling. So anyways, uh, definitely increase in athleticism. Um, number two is we find a nice healthy balance among things. When I was kind of hitting the bodybuilding for a while, um, and when I was training for Ironmans, when I was a sponsored triathlete, both those routes became uh, really repetitive, right? So they just got boring after literally years. And I mean, if you want to really excel, there's the 10,000 hours um, uh, kind of quote, or I forget how that goes, but spend 10,000 hours doing something, you become a professional. Um, but where I kind of, especially in my early 20s, I got super, super bored of hitting uh, back and bys, chest and tries, um, you know, stuff like that. Day in, day out, week in, week out, that got repetitive. And then on the flip side, when I was training for a lot of these Ironmans, uh, the spending three hours on an indoor trainer every single Saturday also got pretty boring. So finding that healthy balance between cardio and then strength is something I'm a huge fan of, both with my, my personal workouts as well as trying to, uh, you know, train my clients into that. So not having, you know, your your, your all your eggs in one basket type deal. Um, so, and again, I've, I've, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. I started off um, my kind of endurance career, and I have another video, see if I can get it right there, um, based on uh, 
my early the last five years of endurance racing and kind of how I went through uh, being a sponsored um, triathlete and stuff like that. But I actually started with ultra marathons um, and those just absolutely killed me um, as far as mentally, physically, you name it. Uh, they were exhausting. Right. And then on the flip, like flip side, bodybuilding was uh, just just monotonous and repetitive. So uh, finding that healthy balance is definitely a pro in my opinion. Um, I guess another pro, I guess, uh, number three on the list here would be, um, started to look better. So again, uh, being on both ends of the spectrum is when I was big, when I was 240, I was just, I was just, I accumulated mass. What up Mac from it's always sunny. Uh, I, I tacked on a lot of, a, a lot of mass for sure. Um, so when like 240, I couldn't run, but in my opinion, I didn't, I didn't look that great. I just looked kind of like puffy and bloated and you know, things like that. I was really strong. Like I can move some weight. I think I deadlifted my one rep at that point was like 515, 520. Um, so again, I was strong, I was big, but if we're talking like aesthetics, um, you know, or trying to do like, like a men's physique competition, I think I was out. I think I was like. 240, 250, probably about 14% body fat, just this big guy of mass. And I'll try to, you know, get some pictures. And then on the flip side, um, uh, in the endurance world, I was super thin. And that was my goal um, was to basically become as thin as possible. Because uh, my mindset there was um, the thinner I am, the faster I am, right? So again, we get into a little bit more of like kind of the eating disorder um, side of things there or body dysmorphia which is a whole nother topic I would like to cover in another one of my videos, uh, but we won't dive in too much right now. But overall, finding that healthy balance, um, you start to look better as a hybrid athlete, in my opinion. So you're not just, you're not kind of all in on one or the other, um, but aesthetically, I believe it's much more pleasing. Um, again, in my opinion, I think I've started to look a little bit better um, just overall, uh, basically without a shirt, um, being a hybrid athlete, again. Uh, so, uh, I guess number four on the list, just kind of carrying it through these, um, again, kind of working just more of the, the, the pros right here, but the, the mental side of things. So a lot of individuals strive for things to do that are mentally difficult in order to, uh, basically, um, receive that mental satisfaction, right? So we want to basically put ourselves through a, a little bit of suffering in order to release endorphins to get that satisfaction, serotonin, dopamine, you name it. Um, so as far as like hybrid athlete, you have that ability to train and perform those very mentally satisfying workouts. And, you know, that could be, that could be a 45 minute high intensity interval session that could be trying to do a uh, hundred burpees as fast as possible. That could be trying to run 10 miles. That could be, uh, trying to, you know, get a squat bench dead one rep max, you know? So again, it's, it's, it's versatile, right? So having that, that ability to perform some of these mentally, uh, more difficult things elevates the level of mental satisfaction again, in my opinion, right? So certain workouts for me are going to be more mentally satisfying. One of the more mentally, um, I guess, refreshing ones for me is like, you know, I go out on a Sunday morning and run six, seven, eight miles, put some hills in there. And that's pretty much it. That's all I do. Um, that right there is like, it's, it's kind of hard to beat a Sunday morning run. Um, but you know, we kind of find what that kind of refresh button on the mental side is for us individually. And what's going to, what's going to be the most satisfying and then kind of build around that, like build your, your workout regimen, your weekly splits around something like that. So I know, uh, currently every Sunday I'm out on a, a long run. So I kind of plan accordingly on a week basis. So I'm not going to train heavy legs Saturday afternoon and then go try to run eight miles Sunday morning. Um, but yeah, so those are kind of like, I guess some of my top, top uh, four, um, list. Uh, and again, I, I, I've been training as a hybrid athlete for a while. Um, but I kind of just came across this topic in social media over the last couple months and then figured I'd kind of get a video for, again, subscribers, clients, uh, anyone who wants to watch stuff like that. So I, I do appreciate all the love and the feedback. Um, but I guess we can talk about one or two cons or negatives of this, uh, kind of hybrid athlete lifestyle. So I guess the, the, one of my big negatives on it would be, uh, um, time, con time consumption, right? So it's taking me a while to kind of perfect the, um, 
the the plan itself on a seven day workout split what works what fits together so that can be difficult to do that's that's what i do as a trainer is i come up with a lot of different programs for individuals based on uh their schedule their routine stuff like that so that's definitely um, a con in my opinion or a negative is the time consumption that uh you know trying to be a hybrid athlete and progress in that window um kind of just takes overall so again that's I, if i can help okay that's what i do for a living for the last 10 years is i create programs for individuals um so hit me up if needed and then uh one thing to keep in mind or i guess another uh kind of con or negative would be uh depending upon what level between cardio and strength uh you're at I believe that one's gonna affect the other, right? So if our our one rep mat max on squat bench dead is getting higher and we're being able to pull push more weight, more than likely our uh, one mile time, your 5K time is going to be increasing or getting slower, and it's the same. So if you're getting faster, um, it's gonna be harder to perform a higher one rep max. Um, yeah, on the kind of the the weights. So the level of um, you know kind of uh, performance in cardio versus strength uh, is going to affect. So again, it's it's all about finding that healthy balance for kind of long, sustainable, you know, healthy lifestyle changes, stuff like that, and then progressing in both those uh, appropriately and you know, um, solid. And then lastly, uh, kind of so those are like my four or five pros and cons. And then um, I guess we talk. I'll go through nutrition a little bit quick. Um, so nutrition, again, honestly, is a little bit more on, on the negative side, in my opinion. Um, when I was training heavy for endurance, all carbs, right? But the primary focus was complex carbohydrates or uh, increase in glucose or blood sugar, um, trying to uh, basically figure out a formula for putting gas in the tank and then making sure that gas is premium, right? And then whether it's a, on a long run, or like, you know, consuming like, a, like I was a big fan of Morton's. Um, or like a, one of the, the gels or the goos, um, and then all carbohydrates, big fan of them, and then very minimal protein and fats, uh, and then on the flip side, on the bodybuilding kind of side of things, obviously, we are going real heavy on the protein, real big on the calories, so finding uh, your, your macronutrient ratios, your percentage, again, this is kind of what I do with clients, um, but that can be something kind of difficult, so if you eat, if you're going um, like uh, I don't know, let's say your diets, let's, you're trying to consume keto, right? You're trying to put your body in a state of ketosis. That's going to be all protein and fats, very minimal carbs, but we're trying to perform like a hybrid athlete. We need those carbohydrates for gas in the tank in order to elevate our performance. So stuff to think about, um, with nutrition and nutrition can be a little bit difficult to kind of, um, yeah, basically solidify as a hybrid athlete. What I would recommend or kind of how I like to do it is I will consume my meals based on the workouts I have in front of me. So if I have a heavy strength day tomorrow, tonight for dinner, most likely is going to be a good amount of protein, maybe a little bit of complex carbohydrates, rice, quinoa, pasta, stuff like that. Um, and then plenty of kind of mixed or steamed vegetables. Uh, but if I'm going out on, you know, a big long run tomorrow, tonight's dinner, we're looking at more just straight complex carbohydrates, maybe with a little bit of protein. And then again, steamed veggies or greens or stuff like that. So finding that healthy balance can be a little bit uh, difficult with um, the hybrid athlete lifestyle. Anyways, that's pretty much all I wanted to run through with you guys. I appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Um, continue training hard. Uh, always reach out to me with questions. Um, you know, every day just 1% better. Healthy uh, lifestyle changes, healthy habits, one, one day at a time uh, over the long term. All right, so appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you soon.